Well, good evening, children, and happy Friday. You've got the weekend ahead of you. I hope you had a good week at school. And we've been thinking about Solomon, haven't we, this week? Do you remember uh, King David, his father? Well, David had wanted to build a temple for God. But God said, no, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be David that would do that. It would be his son, Solomon. Solomon was to build a temple for God. And that's what our story is going to be about now. And I've got a picture to show you um, today as well. So when David was king, he'd wanted to build a temple for God. But God told him that his son Solomon would be the one to build it instead. Now, David, meanwhile, prepared and planned for the great task. And he called for the leaders of Israel and told them the temple that Solomon is going to build must be truly magnificent because it will be for God. I have given gold, silver, marble and precious stones of my own for the building. Will anyone else give towards it? And the people gladly brought gifts of every kind. David gave Solomon instructions about where to build the temple and plans for making it. And at last, the time came to begin. Solomon wrote to David's old friend, King Hiram of Tyre, and asked for fine cedar wood from the great forests of Lebanon. Hiram was happy to help. His servants cut down trees, tied logs together to make rafts, and floated them down the sea coast to where Solomon's servants could take them ashore. Solomon employed hundreds of workmen as well as skilled builders and craftsmen and they cut and shaped the huge stones for the temple at the quarry, deep underground so that no noise of hammers should disturb the quiet of the sacred temple site. Can you imagine this? Hundreds of people busy working and making things. It's amazing. For seven years they worked quarrying, sawing, hammering, carving and casting metals. And at last the temple with all its furniture was finished. How beautiful it looked! With solemn ceremony, the Levites, they were the priests, carried the sacred covenant chest from its tent. Do you remember how it had been put in a tent? From its tent to the innermost room of the new temple. And as they laid it carefully down, a great shout went up from the crowd and the musicians struck up, the trumpet sounded and everyone started singing, praise the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. And suddenly the temple was filled with dazzling light, far brighter than the gold with which it gleamed. God's cloud of glory had come to rest upon it. And I'll just show you a picture of some of the work that was going on to build the temple. It would have been absolutely magnificent. And that's just a part of the work. It's amazing to think of those trees being floated down the coast, isn't it? Hmm. Solomon was full of wonder and thankfulness to God. He knew that God was too great to live inside any building, but God had shown that he had accepted the gift of his people and would be with them to bless them and hear their prayers. Now then, um, there was a little bit in that story. Do you remember suddenly the temple was filled with dazzling light? And that points, doesn't it? It points to Jesus who said of himself, I am the light of the world. And if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus doesn't need to live in a temple uh, built with hands, as beautiful as this one was. Uh, he's promised to come and indwell us, live in our hearts. Isn't that a wonderful promise to go to sleep on, to know that Jesus will come and live in our hearts and fill our hearts and our lives with good and wonderful things above all his presence. That's a lovely thing to think about before we go to sleep, isn't it? And we're just going to say our prayers now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you because he's the light of the world. And we pray, Lord, he will come and dwell in our hearts 
when we turn to him in belief and repentance, Lord, and just ask him to come and be with us in our lives. We thank you for him. Amen. Well, thank you very much for listening to all the stories this week. I'll see you again next week. But just before we go, we'll do our blessing. Le, le. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye and good night, everyone. Bye-bye.